Welcome to the Lily Meadows channel. Today is June 23rd, 2024. God, we are seeking you. If anyone's watching this channel, they are looking for you. And so am I. God who created heaven and earth, creator of every person listening and everything that there is, you are the creator of everything that exists, even the enemy, and even all that is on the earth. You create darkness. You create light. You are the creator. And Lord, we ask you to speak to us. Since your thoughts are not our thoughts, and your ways are not our ways, we ask you to speak to us from heaven in your word, and from your presence, that you will go forth, in every home and in every heart listening, oh God, that you would go forth and do your will for each one and that you will speak what you are speaking and nothing will hinder it and we will climb to the top of this mountain today because you are helping us and with you we can do everything and today is a pushing through day. We have been in, the people who follow God, have been in a state of waiting on God. We have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. We have purchased of him gold, tried in the fire, and are now clothed. And as the wedding feast begins, and the trumpets blow in our hearts and in the body of Christ around us, we can recognize that it was worth it. All of the pain and waiting was worth it. I promise you that everyone who waits upon the Lord will not be ashamed and will renew their strength. So even as we wait, our strength is renewed. But the reality of the endurance producing great benefit is, is solid. Amen. And we will all be glad that we waited on God. Whoever waits on the Lord will be glad that they did. And I am speaking to people, whoever you are, wherever you are, that are that are either asking, who is God? Because I know people talk about Jesus Christ, but it's very weird what happens in the church. All different denominations and different scenes that you've seen. It's very confusing. You know, when it all came out, all the sexual abuse to children happening from priests, it was widespread and it was exposed and the catholic church kind of hid it under and they would send the po the people for conditioning but then send them right back out among the sheep they targeted the poor and that was just what happened and it got exposed and people were shocked and they might think that's just a, an extreme example but it happens even in my town pastors are caught doing things that are very bad criminal and but yet the Sunday before they got caught, they stood up in their pulpit and gave a sermon and shook everybody's hand on the way out without the people knowing what filth was on that hand. Yet they acted and seemed a certain way. And, and so many of those people coming and going into those services, three services, some, some of these churches had three services, they didn't know. And then they find out and they're like, what? Like, that was, I trusted in that that person was from God, but yet they were acting from Satan and they were from Satan. And it can confuse a lot of people out there. You know, for example, there are people hungry for God. They come to God, but then the guy gives an hour sermon that just puts everybody to sleep. And they're like, is this the God that I just gave my life to? I'm confused. You know what I mean? And that's because there is a false version of him you can understand if you're confused about that. You can read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and God will give you insight. He warned us about it. Every writer of the New Testament warned us about this day and how there would be many that came in his name. Jesus himself said, many will come in my name saying that I am the Christ, that he is the Christ, Jesus is the Christ, but will mislead many. And we've seen it exponentially in our day and in grotesque ways. And so people say, well, maybe Jesus isn't real then because of all these things I have seen. 
but that's only the external what you see with your eyes there you know in here with your ears and the news and things but there is another element regarding god that is a more subtle that is heart to heart god if he wanted to right now creator god could write jesus is lord in the sky in every town in every nation and everywhere there would be nobody who could not see that and everybody would go out and be like no humans could have possibly done that there'd be no sound of aircraft he could do that he could he could do anything we couldn't even think of to prove that god is with god why doesn't he do that why didn't jesus come down from the cross they they mocked him if you're really god come down from the cross like if god really likes you and you're really his son come down like what's what's hindering you and he could have he he is god he could have but he didn't so we ask, so we can be confused, like, is God weak? Is he, what is, what is up with him? Why does he let people, being the sovereign almighty creator, why does he let people do popish things? Like, you know, kiss my ring and ride the mo Pope mobile and everybody is told this lie through certain denominations and stuff that you got to go through a, a one man to get to Jesus. That's just one example but it happens in the doctrine of the Nicolaitans across the earth today right now people are going to church and sometimes that person is really sent from satan but they stand up there and they look good the devil comes as an angel of light and they'll give a sermon it'll be a great sermon it'll it won't even deviate from the word <laughs> unnoticeably it won't and they'll shake everybody's hand and walk out and go do something nasty and nobody will know people get caught up for that all the time right if you're honest with yourself and you You've been in the world, you know that's true. So you ask yourself, how, do, how, how did God not strike them down? There was this story Wade Taylor told. One day he was downtown in the city and there was a man standing on a box and he said, God, I can prove to you God is not real because I just said he's not real and he's not doing anything about it. He's not striking me down. Well, that's just ignorance. Yeah, man, that's just like, <laughs> amen. Hopefully that guy came to the Lord because he was trying to, he was hungry for something, you know, and he was ready to like, he wanted to know the truth. And anybody who wants to know the truth will see through all the human stuff. They will see because in your own heart, you have a hunger for something real. You have a hunger to be loved and accepted. And God, through his son, Jesus Christ, told us that you are loved and accepted. And that he wants you as his own child, adopted, but then you actually become the seed of God, the Bible tells us. So it's an adoption, but we're literally changed into becoming his seed, his actual offspring. Now, we're not going to figure that out in our mind, but we are going to seek God. I see all this stuff happening, you might say, out in the world, in the church, and I don't really want to go to church. Because if I go to church, I sometimes, not always... But sometimes I get a very creepy feeling. It seems like there are very many people afraid and sitting within the box in that place. And they're, I don't know, I just can't figure it out. I don't belong there, even though they're real friendly to me the first time I go. I don't understand what I feel there. You know, we all have sense, spiritual senses, even though we might not understand what they're telling us. Like, if you smell fire, your brain says, there's a fire. There's a fire. Look around and be saved from it. You know what I'm saying? Or if you smell your your dinner burning, you're like, whoa, I need to go turn the oven off. So we have senses that communicate to us. You know, if I smell a really great smell from my past, have you ever had that? And you're like, oh, a great memory comes back. I have this perfume that I wore when I first met and started dating my husband. And I keep it because I love the smell. It reminds me of those sweet days when I had just met the love of my life. You know how that goes. So we have those, those senses can communicate. You know, your senses communicate. Well, you have a spiritual sense deep down in you. You know what I'm saying to you. You're, you're drawn to it because you're saying, yeah, like something in me hears something that makes sense to me that I can, that I can, I don't know, I just feel something about what you're saying, Lily, what what the feeling I have in my room right now as I'm listening to you. 
It's because God sent me. And he wants to communicate to his creation. And he is saying, like, I don't put it in the sky. I'm not going to put it in the sky. If you ask me with an honest heart, are you real, God? Are you real? I will answer you with my answer. He, there are so many testimonies of the reality of that, where he will answer, yes, I am real. And, and, a, and a truly um, noble and hungry and honest heart that's really seeking him, he will not turn away. And so we're going to read Isaiah 42 and get a grasp from even the ancient scrolls. What is God like? And how does he communicate with his creation? He lets everybody do what they want. Oh, um, for to not, not completely. He protects his beloved. He protects you. He's not just going to let somebody come and kick you and hit you. Okay, usually. There are times when the enemy does get in and you call upon God and he will save you. But people will go the direction that they choose. You even, I don't know if you're a parent, but even if you teach your child the right things, you can't make them go that way. It just doesn't work like that. You can push as hard as you want, but the, sometimes the more legalistic and harder a parent pushes, the more sneaky the child becomes. You know what I'm saying? Because they have to hide and they learn in their heart to be sneaky. So the more God, <clears throat> if God were controlling, he's not controlling. Like a controlling wife will be like, control the husband until she's basically stolen his manhood. You've seen that before. And then he really can't really make decisions apart from her. And he's not strong because she's stolen that from him. The darkness will do that in a lot of different ways. And a, a man will steal a woman's beauty by telling her she's ugly. And she, even though she could be the most beautiful woman in the world, she feels ugly because that got stolen from her from another person's perspective. If you believe, you know what I'm saying? If you believe, if she would believe he, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Since we were little children, we were kind of eaten alive. And a lot of things were stolen from us, right? Our call, our beauty, or whatever, because we were told certain things and, and kind of absorbed the lie that you're not worth much and that you just, the earth just poofed here. I heard somebody say one time, a scientist say, if you have a Rolex watch, right, and it rolls up on the shore, a Rolex watch, you can't say that the elements of the sea and the octopus pea and the coral pieces could ever come together to create that Rolex. Do you see what I'm saying? There was a designer of it. And even an atheist would know that somebody designed that watch. It didn't just kind of happen by the elements m mixing together. Well, how about your body? Right now, your blood is pumping through a heart, in and out. Every cell is interacting with one another. My hair is growing. My eyes are blinking. I'm seeing, I'm thinking, I'm experiencing life. Look around your room right now. What are you seeing? What are you experiencing? You're breathing, you're smelling, you're tasting, your coffee or whatever you're drinking. You're hearing me. I'm saying a word, donut, and you picture it in your mind. Cat, fire truck. You see what I'm saying? So all these words that I'm saying produce an image in your mind. That is a design. You are designed by someone who absolutely loves and adores you. And if you're still watching me at 13, 14 minutes, you you're, you're want to know who this designer is more, more and more. And so do I. I am after him. I'm after him every day. I want to know who he is. I want to know what he wants from me. And I want to know how to please him. And that's the key to success eternally as a being. Because you are eternal. You will live forever. Jesus told the story of the rich man and the beggar. And the rich man went to hell. And the beggar who begged outside his gates went to heaven. And was in Abraham's bosom. So Abraham is still alive. The beggar is still alive even today. In that parable, if, that was, if Jesus was telling about a real story. There were two people on each side of the cross. One of them cursed God and said, if you're really God, come down from here and get us down too. The other one said, do you not fear God? We did deserve what's happening to us, but he did not do anything to deserve this. Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He said, I verily I tell you. He's hanging on a cross, talking to his neighbor on the cross beside him. 
Verily I tell you, this very day you will be drinking wine with me in the kingdom. And he was. Do you understand? The reality of that, of that happened. It's in the scripture. It happened. Amen. If you can't believe that, then there's, there's nothing solid. Amen. If you can't believe that in the beginning God created, then you're living in, in vapor. That has no solidarity. You don't know where you are, who you are, why you are. And you're listening to me because you want to know the answers to those things. And so do I. Every day, more and more, we seek him. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be fed. And you're not watching this unless you're very weird. You're not watching this unless you're hungry to be fed by God. Amen? And so he will feed you himself wherever you are, whenever you're listening. He knows. Amen? He will meet you where you are. As he meets me where I am coming to speak with you, he'll meet you where you are whenever you're listening. Because right now, I'm just downloading, I'm just, this is on my computer. Nobody can ever see this right now. But you will see it. And when you see it, you can know that God sees you and is with you and has come through this message. The anointing breaks the yoke and comes through. Holy Spirit comes into your life because you're opening the door to him. Behold, I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and be with him and he with me. Where is Jesus? Right? Do you want to be with him even today? I am with him today. And so can you be or are you? Amen. So we ask ourselves, who is he? What does he want? I, want, I, need, I need some reality. I need to understand. Well, you are designed for something. And when you get in line with a designer... Like, if, if you have electric cords, but you have a blockage between this side and this side, it won't go to the other side. If somebody goes up there and cuts the cord, it comes down and it will not transfer through. So when, we, when we're when we lost in our sin, there's a break. Their sin separates us from God. But Jesus Christ came to put them back together. So we can actually get the energy and life from God direct to us. And that's what God is after. He's not after giving us his, he doesn't hook us up to a pope or some pastor or some priest or something. He doesn't do it like that. Or somebody else who knows God. He, he never does that. He wants direct with you is the only way. You can't get saved because you follow a pastor or a pope or a whatever. He wants this direct and he wants to go direct to you. And that's what you're hungry for. And when you can align in the reality of what he made you for, you were designed to do it. You know, every animal in every ecosystem was literally designed to live there. Amen? Give him glory. Even the thumbs on the monkeys, even everything. Everything was perfectly designed to live where it lives. Well, you are designed to live in the year in which you live. You are designed for a purpose. And animals are purposes, survival and reproduction, amen. But our purpose is deeper even than that. And animals, I believe, do worship God and enjoy, enjoy what they eat and give God thanks in their hearts. I believe that. But it's not the same because people were made in the image of God. Male and female, he created them in his image. So female is, is still in the image of God. We are in the image of God. So we are unique in our design to enable to understand things that are of a divine nature. We can understand God to a point. Now, anyone who says they understand God and how he's going to come and what he's going to do, nobody does get to, obviously, nobody's going to fit God in my head. If I could fit God in my head, how has he created a whale? I can't create a whale. I don't even know the parts of the whale. We can never fit God in our head. Amen. No one can. And a lot of times this, this false ministry stuff tries to explain God. And in doing that just takes away what's real, you know? It's like somebody just got saved and had an experience with God. And then they sit there and listen to some boring sermon for an hour and they're like, that was God? Man, I just want to go home and eat. I'll go back to my sin because that's not good. You see what I mean? Because that's just boring. It's some guy pumping himself up thinking he's great. Amen. We don't want to be around people that do that, and we don't want to do that ourselves because that's, it's fallacy, it's false, it's rust and corruption. 
And anybody who's looking for the downfall of another or rejoices in the downfall of another, keep them far from you, beloved. Keep them far from you. Because if they in, rejoice in someone else being hurt, you're not, you know, that's just a spirit. It's an evil spirit. And they are aligning with that. So we can either, you know, creation, humanity, has either aligned with darkness or light. Amen. And we can eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is both is seeing what is good and evil and, and deciding for ourselves the knowledge of the tree, the tree of the knowledge of good. It's the knowing. When, when people say that they know, you know, and then argue their point as if it were the truth, other than the basic principles, Christ and him crucified, we're not going to figure it all out. Amen. So we, we don't really stand against people in our perspective saying this is wrong and this is right or we're eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and that is religion that is what religion is if you drink you're bad if you don't drink you're good if you but there's so much perversion i know probably you've all seen it by the time you know 2024 comes around there's so much perversion in legalism. I've noticed it extreme. There's huge amounts of perversion in legalism. It, because it's from Satan, too. You know, it's, it's like all those false religions that you're afraid to do anything. But God isn't like that. He wants to align his heart with you. And you don't have to know what's good and evil. Adam and Eve wanted to know. And so they partook of self-sufficiency, knowing for themselves. But we say, God, like a child, you can't enter the kingdom of God unless you become like a child. So we say to God, sir, teach me, help me know you. I want to know your ways. Search me and see if there be any wicked way in me because I want to be pleasing to you. Lord God, help me in Jesus' name. Amen. And we, we sincerely ask him, we're not judging anybody. Amen. That's not our place. We're not worried about what other people think about you, but you're just doing what you are designed to do. I was designed to do this, and so it's very fulfilling for me to do what I was designed to do. And my communication to you is that whatever you were designed to do will be fulfilling to you, ultimately. And you won't need those drugs. You won't need affirmation from man. You really won't need anything but but God to keep pouring in to help you do what you do. And he will sustain you as you do what you were created to do. Amen? And it's, it usually is very costly. If he calls you to something that really serves his purpose in the kingdom of God, suffers violence. But the violent take it by force. Which means if he really has called you and you know it and you begin to live in that call, you will face adversity. But the reality is that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And there's no weapon formed against you will prosper. You just have to keep walking and not giving up. Amen. So I'm not saying that when you come to God and you get aligned with him and your, your power cord connects, you know, you connect into the source, like, like a power line, and you connect into the source. I'm not saying life will be easy. Jesus never said that. I don't know how many times he told me as I was growing up in him, I never said this would be easy, but I kept expecting that things would just work and be easy since he said it would, you know, he's asked me to do it. Why didn't it go easy? You know what I'm saying? And you like, and he said to me, I can't count how many times he said to me, I, who, where have you ever read that this would be easy? Like there's, I've never said that to you personally, and you've never read that in scripture or any Bible story that would indicate to you that this would be an easy walk. So why did you expect it to be? In case I'm telling you not to expect it to be easy just because you're aligned, but to expect that you are connected to the source, which is everything. And I'm telling you the honest truth from experience, that even if the whole world comes against you, he's enough. He's enough. Trust me. You'll know if you know when you know, and so you can trust you can trust me and you'll see in your own life that if you really live before him in spirit and truth, it doesn't matter what happens. Even yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he is with me. Amen. And so we're going to finish this message quickly. 
and I'm going to indicate to you how, how God expresses who he is in Isaiah 42. Please read the whole thing. If you can, it's a great idea to download the Bible app and just listen. If you go to the Bible, like the YouVersion Bible app, the best reader for, that I have found is the ESV version and just the reader of it. I love King James Version because that's how I learned. That was my language, my biblical language from, from my when I first got saved around 20. That was my language, so I understand it and love the wording of it. But the reader is distracting to me on that on that app. So if you um, like to audio listen, maybe while you're cleaning, doing the dishes, it, that would be awesome for you. Just to get that word of God in you. Because if, if you don't have that, you don't have anything, really. Because you need to know what Jesus said. You need to know what he said in Revelation chapter 3 to be prepared for his coming. You really do. I'm telling you the truth. You'll be sorry if you don't know what he said in Revelation chapter 3. You'll be sorry because you won't be ready. And those who are not ready, it's very serious. He's not some old, old lady that pats the little boy on the head. Okay, whatever you want to do is fine. He is a king. And he is a just judge. And he's the only judge. And he will judge justly. So you need to know by which the word by which you are being judged, and you will be judged. Revelation chapter 3, you, you really have to read it. Okay, that's your mandate today. It's your homework. <laughs> Amen. But and please read Isaiah 42, the whole of it to understand God. I'm going to read just a little bit, and in a few minutes close. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. And we're just talking about Jesus. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud, nor lift up his voice. You see, he's not on TV. There are people on TV in his name. But most of the time, I've never seen actually where he was doing that. He does not do that. He doesn't go to the... He doesn't look for influence like the devil looks for influence. The devil has that black box ready to... to, to influence the world through it and speak like everybody want he, he sends this unified message sometimes the prince values and powers go forth and and deceive and send unified messages he doesn't cry aloud or lift up his voice he doesn't do that he goes for heart to heart one at a time and he's after your heart if you're still listening to this and you you're seeking god amen He's after your heart, and whoever you are, he's after everyone's heart. He doesn't want any to perish. He's after your heart, right? So how does he get it? He does not cry aloud, Jesus, or lift up his voice, or make it heard in the street. Usually he's not in those people screaming his name out there. Sometimes, sometimes he uses that, amen, amen. Sometimes those people are so full of pride that they, they, they are fire and hell and you know and all that that's he's not like that though hell is a real thing and if you don't come through the door jesus christ to come to god in your own heart by your own choice in the spirit and truth not not in some mental ascent that jesus is real but i mean a real you talk to him and he talks to you and you come to god through christ that's the only way to get to god and anybody nobody goes in through another door though they try Amen. He will punish those who leap over the wall. Go in some other way. You have to go through Jesus Christ to get in. Amen. And that's the reality of the day that we live in. You, I mean, you have to come through Christ. And if you don't, you'll go to hell. Because he paid the consequences. We all deserve hell. We are all sinners. And the consequences of sin is death. And we all deserve to go to hell. But Jesus, because we do. But Jesus came and died so that he took our penalty so we can receive our prescription and be, be healed and delivered from our sin. And then he won't remember. And we can go home to God. Amen. And if you don't go through that way, you will never get to heaven. There's no other God. There's no other religion that will get you to heaven. There's deception that tries to make you think weird stuff about eternity. But the truth is the truth. And you know it. Your spirit is bearing witness with my spirit because your spirit will live forever. And it doesn't want to go to hell. <laughs> I don't think. I don't know. But he's not crying aloud or lifting his voice. You turn this on because you are looking for him. Amen. He's not going to put this like God, almighty God, could put this on every TV even though it's off. This very message. 
right now. He could t put this on every computer, this message, on every computer and every TV. And people would be like, how did that happen? Nobody could do that. And they would listen. You see what I'm saying? He could put any preacher that's preaching from him. Um, he could do that. But he doesn't do that. Because you open this because you're looking for him. So he responds to that. Do you understand Jesus a little better? That's how he walked when he came here. He didn't run after and chase people down. They came to him. He came down from the mountain and the leper came to him and said, Jesus, I know you can. If you're willing, please make me clean. He touched him. He will touch you. No matter how dirty you are, no matter what you did, he will touch you, Jesus Christ, and make you clean because his blood paid that price. That's the truth. And it will set you free and then you'll know your creator. But he didn't come into your world and demand that you watch this. I don't think he will do that. I don't think he would. I think you opened it because you're hungry. He, he, people came to him. He was sitting at, with the woman at the well. He didn't start telling her anything until she asked him questions. Sir, I want this living water. He said, if you ask me, I'll give you living water. She, then she asked, well, okay, how, do, how would we get that? You don't even have a bucket. And then he told her everything that she ever did. What a prophetic word, right? And she was like, amazed. Who are you? Whoa. And he said, you, she said, you're a prophet. Even in Samaria, you're a prophet here to me. And he was like, he said what he said. But he invited her to be hungry for him. And then he told her. Because you can't, like, a girl will be scantily dressed to get attention. But she's not getting the right attention. She's not getting, God knows how to get attention in a pure way where the person's heart is in it and they'll be able to maintain because it isn't easy to follow Jesus. And somebody, like he said in the parable, the seed was sowed in the ground and it sprung up and then died quickly because it had no root. He knows that if, if he makes it easy, he can't always make it easy. You have to go after him because if you're not hungry for it, you're not going to make it through it. Because it's hard. It's like an Olympian. An Olympian is so hungry for the victory that they will pay the cost to win it. How much more a servant of God, people? What is a victory crown is, you know, they're going to get a gold medal. Sure, that gold medal might go with them to heaven. I don't know if it will, you know, if they're a strong believer. I don't know, you know, what material things go to heaven with people. But they had to pay for it with their whole life. And you think any less of serving the Most High God? You offer to me this lame animal. If you offer that to your governor, how would he feel? Yet you offer me this lame animal, he said in his Bible. Don't do that. If you're going to be in it, you're in it. And it'll cost you everything if you really want to be in it. Amen? And so he doesn't come after people because he knows they have to hunger for him or they'll never make it through. If that person, those people who are going to the Olympics soon... They're, they're qualifying right now. They're in it to win it. They've hungered for it and served for it. And when they get in it, they're going to be ready for it because they're ready for it. How much more does God deserve his servants to be, to be devoted and in it? So if you're watching this because you're hungry for God, then you're ready to start walking with him. And he's connecting your thing. But he's not going to just go out and tell, you know, because if you're not hungry for it, Sin is, is much more, in the moment, pleasurable than waiting on God. So if somebody's not hungry for it, then they're not going to be able to maintain themselves in it. And he knows that. That's why, if you're still listening to me at 34 minutes, the Lord is honoring you. Because you're seeking him and you'll find him. He's talking to you. I'm going to connect your, your cord even more. Amen. Because you're looking for it. Not many are. And maybe you will later. Maybe more people will. But he doesn't cry aloud or lift up his voice. People didn't understand. If your God came down from the cross, why would you stand there when you could come down? You know, why don't you just... But he did rip the veil from the top to the bottom. The earth got... Everything got dark. There was an eclipse. The rocks broke in half and the dead bodies came up. And he was raised from the dead. And everybody knew. The Pharisees lied, paid the soldiers to lie 
and tell the people that, that someone came and stole the body. They knew he was raised from the dead, yet feared man or wanted their own thing more than they wanted God. And they didn't humble themselves even then when they knew Jesus was raised from the dead. They still didn't humble themselves, but paid the soldiers to lie. I don't get that. People sometimes, dark people want to be dark and they're just going to be dark. And they want what they want. Saul was like that in the Old Testament. He just, he didn't care about what God thought or what would happen to him spiritually. He just wanted the people to not know that he had messed up. That's all he really cared about in a point. And it's just sad, you know, because what those people thought is not eternal. Where is he now? I don't know. I don't know if Saul got to heaven. I really don't. At the end, he went looking at the witch's house for his answers. I don't know if he's in heaven. And eternity is forever, right? David had to go through it. But he's definitely in heaven. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, so God doesn't do it our way. A bruised reed, he will not break. So I'm gonna close with this. If he if you're coming to him humble and low, he won't break you. I I do that all the time. I am a bruised reed. Like, oh I'm hurt. Oh, I'm sorry. I love you. I did that wrong, and I'm sorry. I'm... And he will not break that. And a faintly burning wick, he will not quench. If you're still listening to me, he's blowing on your fire instead of quenching it. He'll do a little bit of fire in every heart. He'll blow on. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or discouraged till he has established justice in the earth. The coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it. What does he say? Let's perk our ears. Who gives breath to the people on it? Breathe. Thank you, God, creator. That's how close he is. Amen. And spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant to the people. For a light for the nations to open the eyes that are blind. Amen. You. You. To bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Amen. Nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Therefore they spring forth. I tell you of them, sing to the Lord a new song. Be joyful, all the earth, his praise to the end of the earth. So what the Lord is saying to you, as you're seeking him, if you're still watching, in spirit and truth, you're seeking him, and he is giving you a new song. He's giving you a brand new day, and I need it too. And those who seek him will find him, and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. So let's turn to him and close. God, wherever each person is watching, our hearts turn to you. We want to know what you're like and we want you to connect us to who you are, that you might be glorified. Amen. On earth as it is in heaven. And help us do what we were created to do and align with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're sorry for our sin. And we want to come home. And then we want to be with you. We thank you that you don't break us when we're broken. And you don't put out our fire when we're weak. But you encourage us and keep us going. But those who already think they know, Lord, we don't want to be like that. The arrogant and proud, we don't want to be like that. But we want to come to you as little children that we might enter the kingdom. And so we give thanks, Father. Help us know you and trust you and manifest yourself to us. Each one we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. And I know that he will bless you with all that we just prayed. And that each one of you, wherever you are in the Lord, has, has found a doorway, even in me too, to a deeper place in God today. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Amen.